Great. All right. Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Kim Gray, and I'm here with Steve Garvin. And we are going to share some information with you today. And this is part of our Building Blocks for Success Facebook Live webinar series. And each week over the next few weeks, I'm going to have a guest uh, coach with me. And Steve Garvin is here from the Artful Entrepreneur, and he combines knowledge from a career in corporate accounting with the heart and creativity of being a practicing artist, and you, you got to love his art. He helps solopreneurs connect their hearts and minds to create happy, smart, and prosperous businesses. And Steve, I want to thank you in advance for being with us today and helping us to understand how to put play in our business. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you, Kim. It's great to be here. So why don't you tell us just a little bit about where you, you have a background in accounting. So help us understand how you made that shift from being an accountant to now being this amazing, artful entrepreneur. Sure. So... Um, I was always good at math, and so the, the, the smart route, if you will, was to, to leverage that. And so when I went into school, I looked at either business or engineering, and I uh, actually studied both of those and ended up going the accounting route because I've always had a passion for business and uh, developed some, some skill around programming and technology and so forth, and so kind of merged those things together in order to develop systems for uh, a major global corporation. And uh, something I was really good at, something that I was pretty well compensated for. And, you know, I was called the king of Excel because I could do things in Excel that nobody else could do. And, uh, which was kind of heady stuff. But there got to be a point where it was like, it was a daily grind. I mean, it was like every Sunday I'd, you know, I'd be sitting in the dining room and just, oh my gosh, I've got to go to work tomorrow. And I was just, you know, dreading the thought of, you know, going back to work and, and doing something that I was, you know, recognized for, doing well at, but just sucked all my energy out. And um, it was about the time when the economy was kind of uh, going through some fluctuations. And I was given what I call a pink slip of opportunity. And... Um, which meant that, uh, you know, I had an opportunity to look at the work that I was doing and, and to choose a different way. And um, as I tell people, I did cartwheels out the door because you know, <laughs> I, uh, it was just felt good to be leaving that. But then it was like the reality of like, okay, what the heck do I do now? Uh, knowing that I wasn't going to do the same thing that I had been doing. How do I do something now? What do I do with my life now? And uh, I resurrected a passion of mine from my childhood and younger years of art and started to explore that, that world. And at first it was, um, I looked at what I was doing and like what I'd studied in my art, art history classes, uh, the Renaissance masters, Da Vinci and Michelangelo and so forth. And I'm like, my work doesn't compare to that. And so what I had to do was learn how to find my own voice, my own expression. And, you know, how do I create work that, you know, that I enjoy creating, that I can do some with skill and that people respond well to and came to into the world of cartooning, uh, which allowed a lot more freedom and a lot more, uh, met my style, my voice a lot better. I do love your cartoons. They are so amazing. Well, so is your play style then artist? Well, there's actually, that was actually kind of a discovery. So there's, as we've talked about previously, there's like eight different play styles. And I was like, you know, which one is mine? And, and you know, it'd be easy to say that my play style is artist. But what I found as I, as I spent more and more time doing that, and especially starting to do car artwork for other people, that I didn't enjoy that either. I had, um, that there had to be something else with it in order for me to fully appreciate what I was doing. And what I discovered just by looking at my own play style, my own play history, if you will, what I did as a kid, um, which is I've always been an explorer. 
which is one of the play styles. Uh, you know, I love to travel. I love to go. I mean, I don't ever do the same thing twice, pretty much. Um, it's always something new because I always want to see what's out, what else is out there. And when I started to approach my, my artwork from that perspective as well, it, it opened up a whole new world to me. Instead of just, you know, recreating something, an image that someone else had done or, or whatever in a style, and being able to explore and, and try different things and try different ways to put the images together, I found that I was able to bring that, that explore play style into my cartooning. And actually I do the same thing. I'm also a photographer and do the same thing with my photography in that, you know, what is a creative way? How do I capture the idea that I've got going through my mind visually through photography? So it's not just capturing what's there, but it's illustrating, if you will, the idea um, visually. So do you believe then when we, when we step out into our, into our world of business, but you and I did talk about how even as children, that at an early age, children are encouraged to dis disregard play. And, and it just sticks with us for the rest of our lives. And we never, ever go back to what age do you think we do our best play time? So it's interesting. There have been people who've gone into, uh, you know, like kindergarten, and they'll ask the question, who here is an artist? You know, and... Uh, Everybody, every hand in the room goes up. And then, you know, go back to that same classroom a year later and a year later and a year later. And each year, those hands continue to go down until like fifth or sixth grade. There's like one person that raise, that timidly raises their hand and everybody is kind of like, okay. Um, you know, I mean, it's just, it reduces dramatically. And actually I've experienced that myself in that I've gone into like my daughter's school to do art projects with the kids in kindergarten everybody was on top of it by third grade they were like I don't know if I can do this and part of that's just the way that our mind works so we start um we the our brain develops to the point where we start comparing ourselves more to other people and you know if we're comparing our artwork and our our identity of who we are and what we can do with those around us, and we don't have that freedom to express ourselves, um, you know, artistically or otherwise, it, it's, we reduce a little bit of ourselves. I um, got you. I got you. So then, are we at a, at, are we at a loss then as, as adults, and we're now we're stepping into our businesses as entrepreneurs, how do, how do we get that back? So that's kind of the, the challenge because I mean, one of the things with business is we want to do it right. I mean, we, we tend, our livelihood is dependent upon it, right? You know, to, to have the right answers, to be able to do good work and, and so forth. And that's obviously important. And it's, there's like, what I've found is that there's like two parallel systems going on. There's like our intelligence and our um, knowledge in, in the systems that say, okay, you need to do things in this way. And then there's like the expressive part of us. It's the more, I call it the, the head and the heart. And the head, you know, is all about, you know, well, the books say this and the teachers say this and so forth. The heart says, well, I want to express myself in this way. And if you're not giving yourself permission to express yourself in that way, you know, that it, then it's uncomfortable and honestly kind of scary. I mean, I can't tell you how many people have said, you know, I can't even draw a stick figure. Um, although if I'll give them a, a packet of crayons and a piece of paper, you know, they can draw. Um, a lot of, a big part of it, part of it is giving ourselves permission to express, you know, and, and being okay that, you know, our kindergarten drawing, which is one of the practices I've had people, some of my clients do, is just do a kindergarten drawing. When you give yourself permission to be that five-year-old, six-year-old self, you know, and just draw, you know, whatever, um, you know, you can, you can create lots of things and it doesn't have to be the Sistine Chapel or, you know, uh, Rembrandt or, or anything. It's just put, allowing yourself to express in a way that speaks to you. So let's, let's pick one of these um, play styles and okay. let's kind of play with that for a minute. Which one, um, one that isn't you, one that isn't me. How about the competitor? 
Okay. Okay. So the competitor is fascinated by competition and they have a gift for appreciating the challenge. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's say I'm the competitor and how do, how do, and I have clients. So how do I bring that piece into my business as something that causes me to have fun? What would be an example? So to use a competitor style, um, which is interesting. My, one of my son, I've got four kids. One my younger son, um, is a comp has a competitive streak to him. And he, I mean, whenever you play games, he's always wants to one up people. And, and it's just, and it's not, he's trying, not trying to be mean or vindictive or anything. He's just like, he likes that competition, that challenge of doing a little bit better than he's done before. And, and by looking at, you know, by bringing that energy of competition into your work. I like the idea of like um, Mikhail Baryshnikov, the, the ballet dancer, you know, what he said about um, competition is, is that he didn't ever compete with anybody else. He always competed with himself, you know, in order to do a, a better job than he'd done before. And by, by continuing to exercise and play on that, that competitive spirit of his, you know, he became, you know, world famous and, you know, a master, uh, uh, master of ballet, uh, you know, and, and it's just approaching what we do. We're not really doing that knowledge and that wisdom and that training that we, you know, that's so important in business and in life. It isn't when I s emphasize and, and, and suggest that you look at it in a playful way, I'm not saying throw that stuff out. I'm saying just to approach it from a playful pers perspective. Uh, you know, if you're a competitor, how can you look what you're already doing and in a more competitive spirit way of doing it? You know, if you're in sales, you know, how do you, uh, you know, close more sales? If you're um, a writer and you're a competitor, you know, how do you write more content? How do you, you know, uh, and there's, you know, different ways, different arenas, you know, well, I want to be, uh, I want to reach more people. And so you have to build a competitive way of, of a game out of how many people can you touch with your work? You know, it's just looking at things from that perspective. I love that. And knowing that um, we have introverts, we're, we're so to ourselves, it's a great way to really leverage that if that's your play style compete with yourself mm -hmm. be a better you if like you said you're looking for um you want to increase your list do you want to increase your business then do it better than you did the last time and that way you don't have to measure yourself against anyone else because for me it feels overwhelming when all these other people are doing so well and now i feel like i got to compete against them mm -hmm. you know and it's like i don't want to do that so then i don't do anything right because right. i don't want to be them or i don't want to be there and right. trying to be authentic in com competition isn't something that i favor but i absolutely could up my game by competing against myself so i like that one yeah and it's you know it's really bringing that that spirit of play into it. I mean, if you're like looking at yourself and saying, you know, Sally or Joe or Harry or whatever, you know, they've got, you know, they're so much further ahead than me and I'll never compete. You know, that, that takes like the play out of it. Right. But if you can look at it and say, well, you know what, I'm doing better today than I did yesterday. Or, you know, I've fallen down seven times and I'm getting up eight times, you know, it's uh, that you're continually growing and, and developing as an entrepreneur. Mm hmm. All right. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Uh, how about the storyteller? Mm. We one see this favorite. one a lot. You know, yeah. so this way the storyteller is fascinated by story and they have a gift for telling stories. So help yeah. me with understanding. I can already see what kind of coach this is. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think? So um, story is actually one of my secondary um, play styles too. Um, and the thing that I, one that I know about story is that we're always telling ourselves a story. Um, I was looking at some quotes yesterday and, and one of the things was that we're such storytellers that we're even telling, telling stories while we're sleeping. If you think about, you know, the dreams that you have and, and so forth. Um, 
you know, and, and story is, there's different ways to look at it. So there's the story in being able to re relay a message to somebody to be able to help someone see the relevance or the importance of, of some idea via story. Because story, one of the cool things about stories is that when I tell you a story, and there's, there was actually a study done not long ago where they hooked up a storyteller and a story listener to MRI machines, and they watched their brain patterns. And as the storyteller was telling the story, the same brain activity was going on in the person that was listening to the story. And so there's this mirror neuron thing going on so that they're having a similar experience through the vehicle of mm. story. Interesting. Uh, so there's like that side of it of being able to convey your idea, but there's also the story listening side of it. And so um, even one of the things that I realized is that as an accountant and trying to understand the numbers of, of what I was doing, there's always story behind the numbers. And so if something was askew is always, you know, how do we find what that story is in order to understand, you know, why did sales go down or why did this expense go up or, or whatever. Um, you know, and by understanding that story better, then it gives you the ability to control uh, and to influence how things go in the future. Um, and that's one of the things about stories and, and play is that these are, there's like eight primary play styles, but there's like infinite number of variations of how those things can be exercised. And so like, is there a test or a quiz that we take to find out what our predominant play style is? So, yes and no. There are, I mean, if you do a Google search for play style quiz, you'll get, um, the, what they tend to give you is they'll give you like eight different questions. And what they're actually looking at is what your play history is. And so like when you were a kid and you were playing with dolls or you're playing with trucks, you're playing with whatever, you know, what, it's not even so much what you are playing with, but how are you playing with those things while you're playing? You know, were you telling a story while, you know, you're playing with the matchbox or the hot rods or, or whatever? Or were you directing and saying, okay, well, let's, you know, construct this or, you know, what's the art that goes with this? Or, um, you know, if you're really into collecting, um, you know, that, that you've got the coolest collection of, you know, anybody around because you're just so fascinated by the diversity of it and so forth. And it's like looking at, what I finally, in, in trying to help people to understand what their play style is, looking back at your, your play history is one good way to go. The other way to go is just to notice when you're not thinking about anything else, what are you thinking about, right? What do you naturally do when you don't have to do anything else? You know, are you um, thinking about where you're going to travel? Are you thinking about the story that, that you know, that, that happened or are you thinking about you know how do you add one more piece to this collection and then as you naturally kind of flow into that play style and notice and pay attention to what you're doing that's that's really where um it shows up for you as to what your play style is okay all right so <clears throat> so what you're saying is there really isn't a scientific Vehicle. Not like, okay. Yeah, there's not like, you know, well, you know, it's not like the Myers-Briggs where, you know, you know, you've got 40 questions and, and so forth. It's more of an observation. And the Stuart Brown, who is a, wrote the book that got me into this so much, um, and he's actually the uh, head of the National Institute of Play, what he has done in his work is um, he's collected some 6,000 different play histories and just looks at, with pe at people, with people at what they tend to do when they, as children, as adults, when, you know, on the weekends, et cetera, what do they, what do they tend to do? Um, so. So there's an actual institute of play. Right. Wow. That's crazy. I wonder if they've got like really big toys inside there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they, one of my favorite stores in New York, in, in Massachusetts was FAO Schwartz. Right. Yeah. That big old humongous teddy bear outside. Well, yeah. they're, they're not here anymore, but they're not there anymore. But my goodness, that big, huge teddy bear. I think I saw one in Macy's the other week and I knocked him over. 
Oh my gosh, the whole display. Oh no. <laughs> we're embarrassed. <laughs> and, you know, and then the whole childhood comes back, you know, and I went right. whooping for that one. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then now, so what, do you, what would be your um, words of wisdom if someone said, you know, I'm really getting burnt out by my business. It's overwhelming me. Any, any comfort in words, any steps you think they should take so they can get connected to their, have more fun? Well, one thing that I would say is um, make sure that you're setting boundaries around your work. And so one of the things that I did in my own process was I used to work like from 8 a.m. until midnight pretty much every day. I mean, it was just, and you know, seven days a week type of thing. And, and um, which doesn't leave much time for play. Um, but I felt that I needed to work that much in order to get done what I needed to get done. And so I said, okay, this is not working for me. And so I started to set boundaries and say, okay, at six o'clock, you know, I'm not going to work any later than that. And I'm going to start taking weekends off. And one of the surprising thing that I got out of that was I got as much work done during the fewer hours than I did stretching it out over that much time. And I enjoyed it more. And then the other thing is just start, um, just start noticing when you, your energy, you know, when is, what are you doing when your energy is up? What, uh, what are you, what kind of activities are you engaged in? And then also notice the energy, the things that you're doing when your energy is down, like what kind of activities are, are you engaged in or what kind of people or, you know, what, what's going on and do more of the things that bring you energy and fewer the things that take your energy away. And it as sounds you, so simple. It, it, the, the concept is simple. The practice is much harder than the, <laughs> but mm -hmm. as, you, as you consciously do that, increase the amount of stuff that you, brings you energy, brings you joy, and decrease the amount of things that bring you pain and suffering, um, you know, things begin to change. And you start noticing, one, that you're probably doing much better work, um, and you're probably having much better relationships with people um, and having fun in the process. Uh, you know, Absolutely. So I found that to be true. I have to, but you have to be willing to let go of the things that don't bring you any joy because you can't, you, know, you won't have any room for anything more if you don't get rid of some of that refuse so to speak right so, so it, you can't have more fun if you've got it bogged down with all of this negative or you know painful stuff you got to be willing to let go of it to make room for for the fun absolutely totally agree yeah. with you there i kind of look at that in the way like from bringing back my accounting background in that the things that bring you joy are like an asset right they're money in the bank if you will and the emotional bank account and the things that, that take your energy away are like um, withdrawals from your bank account. And so, uh, you know, we want to have healthy bank accounts. And so, you know, the same thing is true for your emotional bank account as, as is true for your financial bank account. So you have a, a, a group, a Facebook group. I want to make sure I let everyone know that they can, it's a free group that they can join. Tell us a little bit about the concept of the group and the name of the group so we can get folks to come on over and join you there. Sure. So the group is the Art of Entrepreneurship. And the idea is, well, the tagline is connecting hearts and minds in order to, to help, uh, in order to create more happy, smart, and prosperous businesses. Um, and what I've found is that when you connect your heart, happy with your head smart that you tend to be more prosperous you know that that things work better and you're doing better work and you're getting better compensated for it and the group is about is more of a is a support group and encouragement to structure your life so that you have more of those positive uh, deposits into your emotional bank account and the into your financial bank account and fewer uh withdrawals. And secondly, just being the artist and the creative person that I am, I put in lots of encouragement and inspiration to, you know, exercise and, and to that 
that creative aspect. And there's lots, and one of the things I want to be careful about is that art doesn't look one certain way. I mean, there's many different ways to be creative. Uh, you know, it's about honoring your play, your play style, your creative expression, so that you can be doing your best work and, and feel great about it. Yes. So, and, and you have, um, you have entrepreneurs, you have coaches, you have all kinds of folks in there, creatives, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and like I said, people, his art, he, he draws all of that, his daily prompts, everything. They're so cute. I just <laughs> love them. So, you know, I just want to encourage folks, come on over and join us. I'm over in that group with Steve and uh, come on over and take a look. Like we said, it's free. And then Steve, you're also going to provide something for them after, t after we finish here. What are they going to get? So if you come join my group, um, one of the things that's in the files section is um, I put together a workbook on helping people to understand what their play style is. And so it looks at each of those eight play styles and also tells a little bit about my story and, um, you know, just gives some guidance as to how to find your own play style. And I'll that'll be in the file section in my group. So. Okay, so they need to come join the group. And when they get in the group, they can get to the file section and they can download that gift. Right. I'm going to run over there and get mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you, Steve. This has been fun learning about more about you and play and how we need to use that in our business so that we can start continue to have fun and keep our doors open, you know, with, with a really lively spirit. Excellent. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. And we will see you all in the next uh, session of the Building Blocks for Success. Have a great weekend.